Welcome to another episode of Chefs and Show Homes. I am your host, Kristen Reed, and today we are in a beautiful custom build by Monroe Homes, and we are lucky enough to cook with Tim Davies from The Willow on Lestana. So, Tim, how's it going? Thanks Good, how are you? Today. No problem, thanks for having me. Yeah, so we're gonna be cooking some... Uh, we're gonna make some quick and easy wild boar meatballs with a super fast marinara sauce and a pecorino romano baby kale pine nut salad. That's a mouthful. No. <laughs> okay. Quite a bit, but super easy to sort of come together. All right. So what do we got here? Uh, we have our ground wild boar from Schneider Family Farms, uh, ricotta cheese, tomatoes for our marinara, some fresh basil from Green Sister Gardens, some onions, some secret spices that I'm not going to divulge. Otherwise, you'll steal the whole recipe. So. Well, I think that's the plan. Maybe. <laughs> So okay. yeah, we'll start with uh, mixing the meatballs, then we'll cook everything behind us and get the salad ready. All right, so what should we do first? Uh, we're gonna start with the meatballs. So bowl, uh, wild boar mince. So we can just add that whole thing in there. And then you want some fat. So usually we'll put, at the willow we do sort of like almost 50% ricotta cheese, okay. which makes it super sort of tender. Smoked paprika, some fennel, some chili flakes, some dried basil. So we'll put a good pinch of that in there, depending on how much heat you like. Lots of heat. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Spicy? A lot of it spicy. Some Malden sea salt. We're gonna also re-season them once they're rolled, so we don't wanna go too crazy. Then we have a pinch of some minced garlic. I like a lot of garlic, it just depends how many people you're trying to impress with your breath. <laughs> and then some binder, so some saltine bakery breadcrumbs. So at the Willow we use all the sort of ends of our bread for different applications. So we'll grind them into breadcrumbs or we'll use them to sort of puree with milk and make crackers for our soup. Okay. And then we're going to add some fresh diced onion. and uh, one egg. Usually like you can add one egg at a time just to make sure you're not putting too much in there. But you basically just want it to bind together. So I'll do the dirty work of mixing it and then perhaps you can help me roll them out. I feel like that would be the dirty work. Rolling them out? Yeah, rolling no. them out, no? Getting your hand in there. Well, maybe, yeah, yeah maybe right? you should do that part <laughs> and I'll roll them out. Well, I mean, I can help. I can get the salad ready before I dig my hands into meat. So we just have some baby kale, locally grown out of Moose Jaw, some fresh basil, also from the same provider in Moose Jaw, Green Sisters. So do you guys source all of your uh, ingredients locally? Yeah, most like 98% of the time. Obviously, it's harder in the winter time. So usually at the end of summer, we'll get hundreds and hundreds of pounds of fresh vegetables to process to last us through the winter. Okay. Making like tomato sauce or marinara, like at the end of the summer, we'll just process a bunch of tomatoes and freeze them or can them so we can still use local fresh ingredients in the winter. That's good. You can right. taste the difference, I find, and most people find. How's this looking? Good. I would just good. mix it up a tiny bit more right. and then maybe we'll add some cheese because everything's better with cheese. And what kind of cheese is that one? Uh, Pecorino Romano. So similar to Parmesan, just a little more funkier. Smells a little better? One likes cheese. Never have too much. Nope. So I just added some fresh basil to this. It's a secret I learned from watching old cooking shows to just make your salad in a bag. Really? Hmm. So a little splash of olive oil. Again with the sea salt, and then you can 
just, I'll start rolling if you want to do the honors of shaking the salad. Getting all the easy jobs, I like it. Yeah, the less messy jobs. Yeah, it's my kind of cooking. There you go, so just give it a shake like right. some old shake and bake. I'll start rolling these guys. Is that probably pretty good? Uh, yeah. Okay. And try a piece if you want to see if there's enough salt in there. We're also going to add some capers and pine nuts at the end, so that's going to add some extra salt. Yep, I think it's good. Okay, perfect. Do you want some help rolling? Uh, yeah, sure. All right. If you don't mind getting dirty. <laughs> so now, how long have you been at the Willow? Uh, since 2007. Okay. We just celebrated this past August our 14th anniversary. Great. And now you guys do a lot of events there as well, right? Yep. Uh, we do lots of weddings. Uh, this year we had Mustard Fest back there again. And then usually in the winter we do what's known as Lights Out, kind of like eating in pitch black darkness, which has been kind of fun every year. I've heard great things about that. I haven't had a chance to get out for that yet, but it's I'd pretty love fun. To. It's different from other cities that are doing it. Like usually you pick what you want to eat before you get in there. Oh really? But okay. When we do it, we pick what you get to eat, so, so you don't really have a choice. So it's kind of a secret. That's nice. It's also a very huge challenge to make a restaurant that's entirely built out of windows perfectly black, so. <laughs> can imagine. Be a challenge for the servers as well, getting around. Yeah, well they've gotten pretty used to it. This is like, I think this will be the fourth year we've done it. So, so you want to keep them sort of the consistent size so they all cook at the same time. That's probably mine. Yeah. Usually I go pretty big. Mine are pretty perfect. Yeah. I'm a pro at this. I know. You can have my job. Okay. Please. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna wash my hands yeah, and then too. we will fire up that oven. All right, so time to cook these bad boys up. Yeah, we're just gonna sear them in a medium hot pan, medium high heat. Uh, try and brown them on all sides and then... And we've got so, some sauce as well. Yeah, we're gonna make a marinara, but we'll just check on these. So they're nice and brown on one side. So we just flip them over. Now do you just sear them so they don't fall apart? Yeah, just to get a nice sort of crust on the outside. There's a lot of sort of moisture from the ricotta cheese and the fat content of a wild boar, so sometimes they'll fall apart, but usually that's what you'll want through egg and your breadcrumbs and sometimes mustard for a binder. Mustard, oh. Just to hold them together. Okay. So while that's going, we will start making some marinara. So we have our tomatoes. Uh, some more of that Maldon sea salt, some more garlic, and then a mixture of fennel seed and thyme. So we'll just add a couple pinches of garlic. And this is just local tomatoes that I blanched and peeled. But you could and use just a can of sort of like San Marzano crushed tomatoes. Okay. And then you're literally, all you're adding is salt, garlic, herbs. Simple. Yep. So good pinch of salt, good pinch of fennel seeds and thyme. If you want to actually just reach over there and grab me that basil. We can add some more fresh basil to it. So we'll just save a couple of these nice ones for garnish and then just tear it, throw it in there. And then just puree it. Normally I'd add olive oil, but there's quite a bit of oil and fat left in the pan, so we can just use that to sort of emulsify it. All right. That's it, quick and easy. Easy, easy, all right. And then these are still doing okay? Yeah, we'll just leave and let them finish on that one side. Okay. So you wanna be careful because of all that oil and all that fat when you're adding something sort of cold. You don't want it to spit at you. So I usually just lean it away from me. And we'll put that whole thing in there just to sort of almost cover them. Perfect. And then the secret ingredient to everything we do at the Willow is booze. So <laughs> we'll add a little bit of red wine. Like your style. If you're lucky, most of the time it makes it into the food. <laughs> and then we'll just sort of simmer that for 15 to 20 minutes and then ready to plate. 
All right, perfect. Well, while we let this simmer then, um, we've got Heather here with Monroe Homes and she's gonna give us a tour of this beautiful house. So we'll be right back. We're going to start our tour today in the outdoor living space, backing the green space in Harbour Landing. And lucky for us, we have Heather McGuinness here, who's not only the project consultant of Monroe Homes, but she's also the owner of this beautiful custom home that we get to cook in and tour today. So thank you for um, having us today, Heather. And uh, tell me a little bit more about your home and uh, give us a tour. Great. Well, we're delighted to have you here today. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I've been 25 years with Monroe Homes. Uh, custom built three homes in Lake Ridge in the Northwest. My husband and I had moved here a long time ago. So when we were building our empty empty nester bungalow. We looked at other opportunities of where else we might, we might want to live. And Harbour Landing was just starting to take off. And I was very intrigued by the mix of the commercial, residential, and the diverse kind of housing. And so we were looking for a specific kind of lot. This lot was available. And um, this is how we ended up here. We wanted to put the front yard um, the front door on the side of the house. We wanted to put the garage on the front of the lot and we needed a corner lot in order to make that happen. We were very particular that we wanted to back onto green space, um, but I was also very particular about what I wanted to be looking at. So there was a plan for a beautiful playground, which is there. I wanted to know how far that playground was actually going to be. So when I was sitting in my sunroom or sitting in my backyard, I could see the children, but not necessarily hear the children. Yeah. Um, so this has worked out to be a beautiful, beautiful, um, location for us. The city looks after cleaning all of this paved walkway that you see. We've got a small older dog so it, we all you know 12 months of the year that's fully accessible for being able to go for a tiny walk with her and it's great to see. The neighborhood is very very well used. That park space is full of kids often playing soccer. The playground is full. Perfect. And now we are going to do the home tour, but can you tell me a little bit more about um, how Monroe chooses the lots and it, does the client have any say in that? How does that process work? Absolutely. So there's two ways of doing it. Uh, one is to buy one of our inventory lots and we, when la lot land becomes available, we sit down, uh, the ownership group and myself and go, okay, let's make sure we have something for everybody. So we always like to have a pie shaped lot. We always like to have a corner lot. We like to have one on main streets because there are people who want to be on the main drive. There's people who want to back onto a park. So we like to have inventory that is of all price ranges and lots of suitable or optional choices for people. Oh, great. And now covered decks are very popular these days or three season patios, I guess, um, obviously because Saskatchewan is kind of cold and we do have a lot of mosquitoes. So yeah. um, should we move inside and we can talk a little bit more about that then? You bet. And I will tell you, there was an evolution. So when we designed the house originally, if you look at our original blueprints, this space was a deck. Okay. It was just gonna be a deck with railing similar to what you see here. As we started to build the house and the park was starting to be finished, it was like, okay, well, you know what, maybe what we should do is screen it in. So we started with screening it in and by the time we actually finished and the evolution completed, it was screened in, glassed in, with a television, with a fireplace, and it has become a bit of a, a joke for most of the people who know us well. They say you've got this beautiful 1800 square foot house, but for about nine months of the year, you're living in 140 square feet of it outside. Oh, great. Well, let's go check it out then. Okay. We do have a house directly next door and it's a big wall of stucco there. And this is also a Southern exposure. So we opted to put in of this roller blind to give us a bit of a break from the view of the house next door, but also to cut down some of that UV because it can get very warm in here on a hot summer's day. We spend almost all evenings in here. We have a television and a fireplace. So when it does start to get cool, we can take the chill off. And it's a sad day every fall when we recognize it's just too cold to be in here and we have to shut the dining, dinette door. But that dinette door we opened probably in May of this year okay. and it will stay open unless we go on vacation that door remains open until the fall. Oh, perfect. And yeah. I see that you have a little doggy door here for, uh, is it Patty? To Absolutely. Get in yeah, so we have a little dog and the issue was she needed to, in the cold winter months, be able to get in and out. 
um, without us having to walk across the sunroom and, and open up sliding doors. So that was always a plan uh, with the company that we dealt with to get this sunroom put in. And it does work out well because she can come and go. If I'm having a long work day, I don't have to worry about rushing home to let the dog in because she can come in and out as she wants. That's really nice for sure. All right, well, should we go check out the rest of the space? Absolutely. Perfect. So now there's so many beautiful design elements that I love about this house, but I mean, these vaulted ceilings with the, with the big windows, that's huge. And then having all of these, uh, these windows on the back of the house with the view, it's incredible. So can you tell me a little bit more about this space? You bet. So Kristen, one of the best parts about custom building and being able to select your lot and design your own house is you, you know things like what is the exposure, um, what kind of lighting are you, can you expect, where should windows be, where do you not want to have windows, and so on. So with this house, um, the big decision was, were we going to do something like a flat nine foot ceiling, which is a bit more traditional looking. Um, our designer really encouraged us to do this vaulted ceiling. And um, the moment we did the parallel cord trusses, which is how this, this roof is put together, it created the, the ability to run these windows up here. I was kind of against the windows at first, only because I, I had lived in a house where you can have the windows in the wrong spot and then you end up getting sunshine coming in and you can't cover them and so on. But these ones are facing north, so I knew that sunlight was not gonna be a problem. And so we also did a bit of a tint on the windows. They're bronzed up, you can tell in the evening a little bit, so it's almost like a sunglass material that's put on, so that we're not getting a lot of light, but we're getting some daylight coming through. And um, of course, we have paid all the money for the view of the park, so this is where we wanted to put all of our windows. One of the things about putting a big covered deck on a house is it does cut down on the amount of sunshine coming in. So we just made sure that we actually put a sizable window so we were ca still capturing some of the eastern morning light that we get in here. Okay. Yeah. Um, when we were designing the house, as you can see, this back living area was where the view was. So this is where we wanted the windows. This is where we're going to spend all of our time. It was really integral to me that we have a bar in the kitchen that wasn't part of the kitchen. In every other house we've lived in, my husband's always had a little cabinet off to the end of the kitchen, which starts to overtake. You're having a dinner party, and before you know it, the bar and the kitchen have started to be, you know, they're me not meshing well, let's just say. So we specifically wanted, I specifically wanted to have a bar area so that drinks could happen here and food could happen there. We have a one bedroom bungalow with main floor laundry, so we've got a beautiful laundry room. And you know, often people, when I give them the home tour, say, oh, your bedroom is not spectacular because it's absolutely quite modest. It's got a king size bed, got a dresser, got you know, some nice furniture in it, but I'm not one for um, spending a lot of time in my bedroom. I sleep in my bedroom. I don't watch television in my bedroom. I don't do a lot of living in my bedroom. So it's a, it's a beautiful, comfortable place right on the other side of this wall, actually. So it was integral for me in the design because I'm not a great sleeper to have the bedroom away from the street and away from the park so that it's the, it's in the quietest part of our house surrounded by the house um, it's also in a, a part of the house where there's not a lot of windows so it's quite dark and cozy in there and we have a very modest bathroom as well don't have that big palatial tub what we have is a beautiful custom shower that has a steam shower in it something my husband really wanted a couple of sinks but it's not oversized i think that's part of the joy of getting a little older and having lived in lots of houses I've had the big tub and you know the sitting area in my living room and pardon me in my bedroom and all those fancy features that a lot of younger people think they want and as you get older you recognize you know I don't use them so I don't want to pay for them it's a lot of real estate to give up yeah. for and I put I put the real estate in the space and the money where we actually do our living that sounds really smart. And, and speaking of that was mostly in the kitchen, right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. Perfect. Yeah. Well, let's head down there and, uh, and see what Tim has cooking for us. Okay. Okay, Kristen, so now we're going to plate the meatballs. So you want to toss your meatballs sort of into the sauce. And since there's a couple of you eating them, we'll probably go pretty big, maybe five. So we'll put a little sauce on there. And any sort of leftover marinara sauce, you can just throw it in the fridge, use it for a pasta. If you want to serve this as a main, you could just add rice or pasta. If you want to use it as an appy, just keep it as an appy. 
So we'll top that with the salad. Right. This is just our baby kale, fresh basil, a little bit of oil. Get rid of some of those bigger stems. Just want to make sure you got both in there, kale and fresh basil. Then we will top it with these pine nuts. A little bit of fresh caper. And then I will get you to do the cheese. Just go to town on the cheese. All right. More cheese the better. Good? That's good, yep. Perfect. perfect. Looks All right, beautiful. so there's your wild boar meatball, baby kale, and pecorino salad. Awesome. And so thank you so much for uh, joining us on oh. Chefs and Show Homes. And you guys seriously need to get out to the Willow to try some of uh, Tim's dishes here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thanks. Okay, Heather, so thanks so much for showing me around the, the rest of the house. Uh, but now we're in the most important room of the home, the kitchen. So can you tell me a little bit more about this? Absolutely. Well, you know, as we talked earlier, when we were custom designing this house, it was very specifically for my husband and I. New empty nesters, we built this house, we were in our early 50s. We knew we wanted a nice oversized bungalow meant specifically for us. We're not fancy people. We don't do a lot of entertaining, but the entertaining we do tends to be large groups. So we don't very often have two people for dinner, we have 20 people for dinner. We've hosted parties at this house upwards of, we've had 140 people in the house, we've had 75 people in the house, and we've had 24 people for sit-down dinners. So I wanted a kitchen that would work well for me on a daily basis, lots of cabinetry, lots of counter space, I love to bake. Yeah, well I think Tim really enjoyed cooking in this kitchen today for sure. Well, we have, we've had a number of dinner parties where we've had three and four chefs and a sommelier and um, a, a wine steward and so on in, in the house and it's worked well. Oh wow, that's incredible. And so now tell me a little bit more about Monroe Homes and what your future projections are um, in this market and going forward. Um, we're very much a custom builder. We've you know, prided ourselves on custom building homes for people uh, building their dream home, whether that's their first home or their last home or somewhere in between. And we spend a lot of time with our clients making sure that we know their lifestyle and we design for the lot and their lifestyle. Um, we, we're having experiencing a, a great year. Uh, we, build, we tend to build at the upper end of the market and there's some beautiful, beautiful lots available in the southeast in the creeks, in the northwest in Greenside Terrace. And that's where right now our building has been focused on some of those more expensive lots and we're custom building some pretty sizable projects. Oh great, and so now what is your build time if someone were to come and ask you they want to start building a home, what does that look like? For an average house, for an average home, um, you know, we're usually eight to ten months. Okay. However, when we get into some of these bigger projects, um, the design time alone will take sometimes three and four months working on drawings and so on. And those builds generally run out 18 months. Okay. But they're a lot more complicated. They usually have much different structure. Um, the bigger the home, the more finishing carpentry, the more um, specific and uh, customized features, which take time. Uh, you know, people often forget that a finishing carpenter can take eight weeks in a house if there's a lot of shelving and railing and custom features, and he needs the house to himself during that period. So it can it can extend out certainly to 18 months. Okay. And now, in terms of design, um, do you have an interior designer that um, clients would work with, or do they choose their own? How does that come together? We have two very key people who work with us. Um, First one is Shelley Clark from Clark Design Studio. She is a pi private contractor who works for us as well as doing some private individuals, but she is our architectural technologist and does the house design. Okay. So she actually does the working drawings, um, preliminary drawings, and the floor plan. Once that is done and the house is actually under construction, then we work with a, an interior designer, Marina Hildebrandt from Marina Hildebrandt Design. And Marina works with all of our clients to help put the package together. So she's helping with paint colors, 
granite selections. She worked in my house with me. Um, some of the features of our house are specifically marina related. So for instance, I um, really wanted granite in my house, but I don't really particularly like the shine of granite okay. and the glossiness, and I knew I wanted to do a dark color. And the darker the color, the harder it is to keep up from a dust or a fingerprint or handprint perspective. So Marina was integral in helping me select this honed granite surface, okay. which is, um, it's a bit of a leathered looking for finish. We, you don't see it very often because it's a little bit more expensive, but it takes, it dulls it down and gives you a little bit more of a natural feel versus that glossy granite look. Definitely, yeah. I didn't actually even realize this was granite. Yes. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. I love so that. So it's got the durability of granite. It's an actual, you know, a, a slab of stone, but it's actually just cut with this honed finish. Okay. She also was the one that was integral in getting the tile on the on the wall that you see here. Okay. Um, we were really unsure about what to do to be able to bring this backsplash and work. Where do you stop it? Where do you start it? And so she's very good at spending our clients' money <laughs> and my money as well. So she, it was her idea to actually ex extend that um, Peruvian limestone all the way along the wall there. And what a great idea. You actually don't see that in Regina as much as you would down south. It's yeah. a very popular thing down there. Yeah, it was an expensive feature to do, but in the end it ends up being one of the highlights of the house. When people walk in, that, that's what they remember. Definitely, yeah. And then coupled with the vaulted ceilings. Yes. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Oh, good. And so then now going forward, if someone wanted to um, build with Monroe Homes, mm -hmm. what who would they contact? Oh, I'm the only person that sells houses for Monroe Homes. Okay. Um, and we walk you through the process. So I'd be very anxious or, or pleased to talk to anybody who's interested in doing a custom build. But do keep in mind, we also build some very modest homes as well. Okay. You know, we tend, we our, our business certainly historically has been focused on that custom end of things. We always have a couple of spec homes under construction. We always have some infill lots for the, so for the client who wants to live in Lakeview, for instance, we often have lots available for infill construction. And anybody can contact us. We've got a great website, www.monroehomes.com. Perfect. And you can see us on Facebook, Instagram, Perfect. And now you guys do have a new show home under construction right now. Uh, when are you expecting that to open? We're expecting that to open in spring of 2019. Okay. And I'm super excited about it because it's going to be a little bit different for us. The last few years we've done um, some very transitional houses. We've also done a couple of urban modern type houses. We're doing something a little industrial this time. Oh, good. So it's going to, we're really going to try and achieve a bit of a loft, New York loft feel. So lots of brick. Um, lots of black, um, mm -hmm. lots of glass, and a little industrial feeling. So it's, it'll be interesting to see if it actually is a success or not. Well, I, it sounds like it will be. I love that idea. That yeah. sounds great. Yeah. And where will that one be located? That's going to be at 4365 Chuka Drive Chuka. in the Creeks. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. So you guys will have to uh, wait to see Monroe's new show home in the spring of 2019, but feel free to call, call Heather anytime to, uh, to set up a private viewing of any of their spec homes and to uh, book a consultation to build your next custom home. So thank you so much, Heather, for having us today in your house and hosting us. And, uh, and I'm excited to dig into uh, Tim's meeples here. So let's get started. Absolutely. Thanks so much for joining us on Chefs and Show Homes and we'll see you next time.